You're listening and watching Stuck in Middle Podcast, a platform for entrepreneurs, innovators, move makers, and creators of African descent. We hear stories, ideas, and experiences on how we can break the mold, break barriers. This particular episode is sponsored by our online store. So visit satmpodcast.com backslash store. Shop Stuck in Middle Podcast merch. Help us grow this machine. Also, we have partnered with Perfect Office Solution to provide affordable, professional, and uh, affordable, professional, flexible office space to DMV entrepreneurs in over seven locations. So hit them up. Let them know we sent you. Use promo code SITM Podcast to get 10% off your monthly lease. That's perfect office solution. I got a special guest in the building. I'm excited for this podcast. She is a second time return guest. You know yes. what I mean? Last time she was on, she was here with a crew, the cast and crew of Plantain and Proverbs. Since that short mm-hmm. film has dropped, I have watched it four times and I have put <laughs> seven people onto that movie. But we're not talking about Plantain and Proverbs today. I'm mm-hmm. excited for this. Um, I have the sister of the creator of Plants in the Proverbs in the building. Uh, like I said, she is the co-founder of Inchem Life. She's also a graphic designer, a web developer, photographer, content curator, and visual story. Chichi in the building. Yes. She Ooh. did my duty, kid. Last time I butchered oh, you her said name. That really well. Yeah, last time I, I think the practice it. from the first time, right? See, all week. She See, didn't practice helps. Practice helps. She didn't ma. Yes, you have to keep saying chi den ma. Break it down. Yeah. How you doing? I'm doing good. I like I'm doing the red good. dress. I, made it. The, I Thank know. you. There's she's, no way you can miss me. In she's red. an hour late, by the way. What? Wow. <laughs> I, had, I had just had to go on the record. If you only know, if you only know the story, you would be like, I got wow, time. Okay. Uh, no, nah, no. Nah. Later after <laughs> I, the I wanna, after show. <laughs> I want to, you know, say like, you know, pro, like I said, you are a return guest. Um, yes. And you know, I, I was just but looking I was over. Like a cold guest. Yeah, yeah, cold guest. On the thing. side. Yeah, yeah, yeah nah. But you, you did, you laid some jams down. Mm. I was watching it last night too, preparing for this. Nice. Yeah, I was okay. Like, Dang. She That's said, awesome. Ooh, ooh, okay, okay. She's talking, talking. <laughs> but the pick up from there though, or not pick up, just to start. You know, you mm-hmm. said one of your greatest accomplishments in life is, you know. Um, you and your family creating the We Tati um, not for profit business. Um, why is that so big for you? And what exactly is uh, We Tati? If I'm so, that right. With Tati, again, like you said, is a non profit organization that mm-hmm. I'm like so, so proud of. Um, with Tati started in 2012, and um, it's an abbreviation that stands for We Are Empowered to the- Achieve the Impossible or um, women empowered to achieve the impossible. So that's what Watati means. Um, And it originally started off by being able to create an opportunity for um, women specifically. And then we we now broaden it to women and men, but the main goal is to bridge the gap between um, academia and entrepreneurship. So empowering the youth to become entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Um, So Watati has a scholarship fund where we've partnered with the University of Maryland College Park. And so if you attend the University of Maryland, um, as a student minority, you can actually receive a scholarship through Watati. But the idea is to come up, we have something called Watati Insta Pitch. So the concept is to come up with your own startup. We have a startup competition. Mm-hmm. So the overall goal of Watati is to be is to, is to encourage entrepreneurship, but to get our youth to think more about life outside of school and academia and becoming a doctor and a lawyer. But what ideas have been and just you know you're losing sleep over these ideas what how can we help you to become the next bill gates you know that's that's more of the goal with on with, is this with exclusive Tati. to female female um no it's not exclusive to females um but i know that the Africans organization though? exclusive to africans or any, any no any Africa, but yeah. specifically people of color Who's so you could be just asian you, and your family? you can me and my family wow, so okay. it's, it's fully yeah um and then also we partner with um we partner with um, or collaborate with local politicians, mm-hmm. other universities. So there's a Watati chapter at Bowie State. Um, we're looking at Howard University uh, coming up in the uh, next season, like 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, so that those schools and the partnerships also help to engage with youth. Um, and we're also at PG Community College. Mm-hmm. So I know PG um, has a program for students where you can transition. You go to PG for two years, then um, a full ride. I'm not sure if it's a full ride, but a transition program to University of Maryland, for example. Mm -hmm. So we work with those students to get their ideas out. So when they get into University of Maryland, for example, they have the money or means to start off their first year stronger than they would have 
you know, without this organization. Right. So it's definitely changing lives. That for is sure. definitely something to be proud yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. And we have an annual conference every year. Um, so this year's conference is coming up in April. Well, no, actually in May. So please, you know, stay tuned for that. It's it's really great. Give us updated on that. You know, like I, we just took a deep dive, but I was I wanted to get to know why that is so big for you. And you have such a huge portfolio. It's like an onion we're gonna peel yes. back. But for those who don't know who Chi Chi is, who is Chi Chi? <laughs> Um, Chi Chi is, I don't even know where to begin, but, um, Chi Chi is someone who makes sure she's, she, she thinks outside the box in a sense that she's a creative person. So I always mm -hmm. say like C stands for creative and Chi Chi. I don't know how, I, th I feel like my parents knew, it. you know, when a baby comes out, you're looking like, okay, I think this child is going to be creative. So Pushing what name can we, <laughs> but, um, no, on a serious note, um, Chi Chi is someone who's very positive, mm -hmm. um, motivated and, um, has an entrepreneurial entrepreneurial mindset when it comes to ideas and creative thinking so regardless of whatever it is i feel like we're it's beautiful to come up in a generation where you can be more than one thing um, and you can express yourself in more than one way. Um, so we don't necessarily have to be tied to one thing. So I think that's what Chi Chi is. Do you think, you know, saying like we, we overburning ourselves though, as you know, as this search <laughs> in entrepreneurship? Mm, I think we, there are people who are overburning themselves, but I think there's, there's beauty even in the burnout it's like okay you know there's this time honestly like i feel like there's beauty in the burnout in the sense that like you even with that feeling of maybe stress or anxiety or whatever it is in creating whatever it is you're trying to do at the end of that burning out per se, per se is the beauty of what you've created right mm -hmm. and so how does it impact other people through being involved in so many different things. How do, mm -hmm. how are you changing lives? How are you making a difference? How are you changing the legacy within your own family? What is it that you're creating that in your old age you can look back on your life and be like, yo, I'm really proud of this. Like, look at what I've I've accomplished. So I don't I don't see anything wrong with it. What are your fears? What stresses you out? What are your anxieties? Um, what stresses me out? I think not necessarily being successful at whatever it is I'm I'm trying to do or accomplish. And I think learning that as a creative person, you have to determine what success is for you. Um, and that's very important. That's, that's tricky though, because yeah. what is success? And what makes it trickier is when you throw culture on top of that. Uh, you know what I break mean? Break that down. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe we could break it down together, but I think what- Like being from, from Africa, and like that, and stig not, not stigma, but it, the expectation of being a lawyer, doctor, engineer, yes, what comes with that. Yes, and then we have our own, like our parents' expectation, their own definition of what success looks like. And then we have our own with the American culture infused in that. It's Facts. like, okay, how do I become this creative person? How do I live a life that I love? Mm -hmm. But yet from their perspective, from the community's perspective, because we grew up in a community, a small or large community, whatever it is, how do they see, how, how do I view my life? life in a sense that it is successful, successful you yeah. know um and so i you, think so you saying we need to break out of those modes of def using society's <laughs> definition of success to measure our success. yes breaking out of it but still seeing value in our parents definition of what success is you see what i'm saying what is if your that makes definition sense? of your success to me um i love that question i think success to me is being able to what i said earlier live a life that you are proud of if you set out to accomplish if you set out a goal whether it may be like okay you know, I want to crank out six paintings this year and get them in an art gallery or an exhibition, a show. I want to start a business outside of my job. Um, those are the determining factors. Like at the end of the year, were you able to accomplish these things? Were you able to start a nonprofit organization? And even in just being able to start that nonprofit, not necessarily, it might not be you not you might not be able to monetize that nonprofit the first year, mm -hmm. but the the sole fact that you're able to start it that in itself is an, ac an accomplishment. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I think defining what it is for yourself is very important, especially if you want to become an artist. Mm. Um, if you want to take a path that most people in your community or in your family have never done before. The road less traveled. Yeah, road less traveled. Perfect segue. When you <laughs> mentioned, you know, some paintings, that's uh, that's a huge part of who you are. Yes, That's who it is. you are, a it visual is. storyteller. a huge part of who I am. A visual storyteller. Yes. Um, what kind of art do you do? Um, so primarily I do oil on can on canvas paintings, specifically women of color, um, portraits of black women. Um, and 
a few of them are acrylic based paintings, um, but focusing on hair, focusing on beauty, defining what, redefining what beauty is. Um, and I think what first started my love for art was studying graphic design and painting in university. Um, and I, so whenever you're working on a piece, you have to Google, like you have to do research. So I went on Google and I'm, I'm typing in the word, this was like almost like eight years ago, I think. So I'm in Google typing in like beauty in Google. Google. I click on Google Images. <laughs> so after I type in the word beauty, I click on um, Google Images, and I'm telling you, the whole screen was just white, white women, women with blonde hair. Ah, Becky, and I'm just Becky, like, why? wow. And mind <laughs> you, the university I went to was predominantly white, and so I'm trying to. Uh, so for me, there was a disconnect. Like, how is this beauty? Mm. You know what I mean? How is this the definition of beauty? And there's something very powerful in that and where I realized like, okay, how do I tell my story and never realizing that there are thousands of women who relate to the same things that I'm seeing, the same things that they've probably Googled beauty as well. And you're not seeing yourself in the media. And I love that all of that is changing now. Um, but maybe 10 years ago, this it's, you would not find that anywhere. So that a lot of that is what's behind a lot of the inspiration in my work is being able to rewrite, rechange the narratives of how we perceive um, beauty um, within our own communities. Um, another thing that inspired it maybe eight years ago or so was um, Michelle Obama, the Obama's last campaign. And uh, Michelle Obama's hair, she just cut bangs and mm -hmm. everyone, the news, everyone kept talking about it. And um, to me, I was just like, why is this the focus on what Michelle, Barack and Michelle, why is it her hair? Mm -hmm. Why are we talking about um, the things she's accomplished, how she's, you know, built a successful law firm, um, law career. Um, and so for me, I was just like, OK, how can we? So I started doing a series of paintings covering the women's hair. I don't know if you've seen yeah. any of my work. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so the goal of that was to then shift the focus from the woman's hair, or her hair texture and realizing, and then I went through my own natural hair journey and realizing sometimes as women, when we get our hair done and people are like, whoa, I love your hair. I love the new hairstyle. You never realize we're like, oh, thank you for complimenting me on my hair. But you didn't realize that that person didn't say, wow, you look beautiful. Wow, you look great. They just told you your hair looks nice. So they're complimenting the hairstyle, but mm. not you as a woman, not your beauty, not anything that's deeper than this. If I cut this off, would you still think I'm, I'm beautiful? Um, and so those are the types of conversations that, you know, I want my artwork to evoke um, and to start. So, yeah, that's I hope I answered your question. But, yeah, I was going to ask you, why do you think women, specifically black women, need empowerment? But you just you just ripped that. Thing right. <laughs> <laughs> I had to, like, break down every layer, every layer. Um, so, yeah. So specifically painting mm -hmm. and then in the process of sharing my art and painting, then came along photography um, and blogging and starting in camp life and realizing that if you are a creative person, you don't have to just be in one space with your art. Mm -hmm. um, um, you can have those conversations. You can still tell your story in other forms and other platforms. I think my sister going into film and cinematography is another example of how uh, another platform, another medium to tell the same story, but mm -hmm. in a different way. When did you first uh, discover your love and, and skill and for, for art? Um, that's a really good question. So I think growing up, uh, my mom, my sister and I wrote a book of poems. I was actually in the was actually in Barnes and Noble at 13. So, I need to spend a week with y'all just like Yes, Google it. I feel life. like you might still be able to buy it. <laughs> yeah, but, um, you were cheating. Yeah, I was going to say cheating. My, che my parents know, so. have tried for us, for real. Yeah, I make them proud, <laughs> I bet. Yeah, do y'all? Would you say you make your parents proud? Um, I think so, for sure. Because my dad, we just recently went to his retirement um, party, like ceremony mm -hmm. this past week. And a lot of his coworkers came up to us and was like, wow, you know, finally we get to put a face to the, to names, the names of all the stories your dad ah, has brought. See, newspaper. that name is out there. My, they're like, your dad's <laughs> brought newspaper clippings of you guys in the paper, yeah, like yeah, showing yeah. us. And we're like, oh, OK, we get it already. But now to put a face to these women women like you know we just want to let you know your dad is really proud of you you know your parents are really proud so mm -hmm. yeah i think we're we're definitely but to answer your question um i think that's where it started was with the book that we put together in middle school 
and it was specifically called Art Poems and Stories of the Heart. And all the illustrations and the book cover, I painted it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so my mom had always like encouraged us to um, to just be creative. And in the process of doing that, my mom was like, hey, do you know there's like a profession like you can actually become. Wow. You can do this for a living. Your and mom I was like, said Yo, that. What? How is this possible? And again, I went online, went to the library, like Man. reading up. And mm-hmm. I was like, wow, OK, fine artist. OK, Shout out to a you, graphic mom. designer. Like, yeah. So I think that's where it all started. And then, of course, it led to buying me paintbrushes and yeah and studying art in high school did it get ever ever get difficult to the point where you're like man or even just now you're pursuing this as you know a full-time thing you right, know like right. did, did it has it ever gotten to a point where you're like i wish i you know <laughs> uh <laughs> try something else right um to be honest it does and i'm not even gonna lie like being a creative person there there's so many emotions and so many things you experience in your life that people who never even dare to do something great or Actually, I'm not even going to say great because there's so many things. Giving birth to a child is great. <laughs> but I'm saying people who never step out to do to act on the visions that God has like, given them, um, they will never really experience things that create, like artists actually go through mm-hmm. in creating, first off, coming up with an idea, gathering the group, the people you need to put that idea together, um and then actually putting that idea on paper if it's on tv if wherever the the goal is um i think it's it's a difficult process but again the how difficult it is is what people celebrate at the end of the day it's Mm -hmm. like yo how did you do this Mm -hmm. you know because i'm sure they had their own visions as well that they're like I can't do it. I can't. (laughs) So I think that's where the difficulty comes in. It's like actually pursuing it. And regardless of the chaos, whatever is happening in your life, staying focused, staying in that lane. I think that's the hardest part, especially if you're someone that has so many other like ideas. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? If you're someone who is good at more than one thing, Mm -hmm. it's so easy to you know, get distracted. It's so easy to see someone else doing it and killing and being like, yo, let me try that. Facts, you know what I mean? Um, yes. Especially if you know that what you're doing, you're doing a really great job at it. It's mm-hmm. like, what? I could do that too. What? I can, I can pick up a camera, you know, <laughs> but in the process of doing that, are you as successful and why and assessing as an artist, as a creative, why am I not as, as successful at doing this? Mm-hmm. How often do you create? How often do you, um, Paint, work on work on yeah uh for me i would have to say during the month like twice out of the week what every do you month. do with it what do i do when it's complete um to be honest your question and i'm like uh um so <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> so for me for the most part a lot of my work after i create it the process of it is scanning it in um putting it on my website, uh-huh. updating my site. And then I have an email newsletter that I send out. So people know like, Hey, this is something new that I've created. Check it out. Um, and then for purchase that, or just check it out Huh? to for, purchase. Okay. To purchase. Okay. That's yeah. what I was going to purchase. To <laughs> yeah. To purchase. And then also utilizing, um, art shows like exhibitions, galleries. Um, so not necessarily waiting for the gallery to come to you, but actually going out and applying to the art shows, which are not free by the way. I don't know. If any art, anyone who's thinking about going into art. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, the applications to these shows are not free at all. So um, determining what the collection, what that series of art is going to be, what is the overall theme, um, not just creating one painting, thinking it's dope and like, all right, they're going to buy it. No. So there's a whole like process that yeah. goes into it. But that's pretty much like the sum of speaking of somebody going into art, you know, in our shows, you know, when your friends were going to college, um, studying law, engineering and, uh, you know, medicine medicine or uh, <laughs> things like that and you go and say i've decided to study painting and visual arts right uh, why that decision and would you advise you know somebody looking to go into that to, to go um, and study that so that, that's a two-part question right Fact, so yeah. the first one was why, why? the decision yeah the okay why. why would i go into it i'm mm-hmm. confused okay so <laughs> why i would go into it compared to that is because for one and most importantly it's my calling um is to create um regardless so not necessarily just painting but Mm -hmm. being a creative person i think if you um it's something that you're very passionate about and like you're actually 
you know, outside of what you're studying is something that you wake up the first thing in the morning. It's like, yo, what can I do? So you don't feel forced. You don't feel like it's, you know, I don't want to say a nine to five because I think in order to be successful at whatever it is you're doing, even as an artist, you have to treat it like a nine to five or Mm -hmm. longer than that. Um, So, yeah, I think that's to answer your first question. It's something that just you know, comes naturally to you. And then your second one is, would I encourage yeah, like, someone yeah, to do it, it? You know, it's so like going, going to school to study this painting, right. like, you know, visual talent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would encourage them to do it only if it's something they want to do. And I would, I would challenge that person to um, question, to really process their intention. Like, why are you doing this? Are you doing it for clout? Are you doing it because it looks like something that's cool that you've seen online? You know what I mean? Um, are you are you doing it? Are you going to stay in this profession even when it gets rough? Mm. You know what I mean? Like, are you going regardless of how long it takes you to make it as an artist? Are you going to stay in that lane? Um, so I think for me, those are the questions that other professions you don't you don't necessarily need to process them. You know what I mean as much. But to be an artist, to be a creative, I feel like you have to this. You have to do a lot of soul searching. Like you have to dig deep, which is why I feel like artists are create. You know, deep people in general for the most part. But um, I think those are the important questions. So I would encourage that person to to do whatever it is that they want to become a writer, um, a cinematographer, to actually think about it for a while before you just hop into mm-hmm. it. So yeah. that's dope advice. You know, yeah. you mentioned uh, newspaper clippings earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, I was, you know. Reading Washington Post, Washington Post, you know, <laughs> Jeff Bezos, Washington right. Post, <laughs> Jeff Bezos came across an article, uh, right. you and your sister, right, Chico right. Nonso, mm-hmm. Ma, Washington Post, Jeff Bezos, <laughs> uh, and you guys said in this article, DC does not have my GameCube. What do you mean by that? <laughs> Wow. Um, Washington Post, I mean, Jeff what, Bezos. Do, what do you think? Do you think it has Maggie? I don't know what you... I, <laughs> All right. Wow. <laughs> um, no, I don't. So our intention again with saying DC didn't have Maggie, this was like a few years back when DC just started like changing Gen- and yeah. like gentrification was, mm-hmm. you know, happening and people were actually witnessing it. Um, and so why we said it lacked Maggie was more symbolically talking about the lack of culture and stripping away culture so you could replace maggie with mambo sauce you know what i mean it could be anything else but um for us being nigerian american and first gen maggie is you know on everything you know i had maggie on my eggs you know what i mean (laughs) hard boy (laughs) no no fried eggs try it though some people are hip salt is not enough maggie oh yeah yeah, that's the first ingredient (laughs) maggie Yes. Okay, so it's Maggie with the side of eggs. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Uh, you know the team. But um, you know, with with that though, where 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 are we now as a society? Um, right. As, DC specifically speaking of Baltimore. Um, I can't really. I can only give my perspective on yeah, it, so I can't. Which is really what I'm like asking. An for. overall, mm-hmm. right? But um, I think as a society, I think there's beauty in um, spaces that change. I think change can be a beautiful thing because um, I find that a lot of people are still using spaces that were once just black neighborhoods i feel like people are still you know finding their own space in those areas even though it's changed um but i do feel like there's a a a lot of loss that's happened in the past maybe like four or five years in dc Mm -hmm. where there used to be um jamaican restaurants there used to be a space where they would play like just Afro and Caribbean music um, and people would just hang out. There used to be uh, live poetry jams in DC. They still exist, but they were in spaces that anyone could could find could find you, could find these spaces. Mm-hmm. Um, and then again, going back to the art, um, a lot of the gallery exhibitions were primarily like black artists. Um, there was an overall black vibe. So it's not just visual art, but there's music, there's spaces that you don't necessarily have to search for. You could just walk down U Street, Adams Morgan, and it's right there. Um, and now I feel like a lot of those spaces, they might exist, but it's hidden. You know, you might have to go online. You might have to go on social media to find these spaces. Um, So I don't think that is doing black creatives. I think it's doing black creatives a disservice because it shouldn't just be spaces for black people 
um, creating, but we should be able to uh, be more inclusive where other cultures want to know, want, are able to ex- access what we're creating and what we're doing, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the new DC is not as progressive for people of color who are creatives. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just from my perspective. Um, but the, the, the restaurants, the food is really great. Um, yeah, I mean, it's nice. It's beautiful. All you got to do I is see. just subscribe to Stuck in Middle and you're going to find all the black creatives you need. That's a fact. Yes, and that's why this is a beautiful space, you yeah. know, because we need this. Times mm-hmm. are changing and we need spaces like this for sure. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I would say, though, you are very blessed yes, um, to be amen. able to leave, uh, live, you know, say your dreams mm-hmm. as a creative, mm-hmm. as an uh, entrepreneur. Um, how are you able to sustain yourself um, as a as an artist right um i really like that question because people think just because you're an artist that you know the term struggling artist like is a real thing um but i don't necessarily believe that it's something that you have to answer to um as an artist and again i I love to bring up the time we're living in just because you're creating in one space doesn't necessarily mean that is your only that's the only thing that you should rely on as your means of income, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's why I'm so thankful. Like, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but even in the midst of me having my gallery exhibitions in Canada, for example, and they're like, yo, how'd you go from, you know, Canada to Nigeria in the midst of painting, being able to start a blog, like how, who's funding this? And um, never realizing that I, I got my college degree for a reason, so I'm going to use it. (laughs) Um, So outside of painting, um, it's still me running a freelance graphic design company, a freelance business. And initially it was freelance. And then I went off to register my company as an LLC and do the scientific. Yes. Like (laughs) legit, you know, getting contracts because you cannot get specific contracts without having a, a certified company or business. Um, but a lot of it was working with black female entrepreneurs who are starting hairline companies. And they're like, Hey, we want to start a natural hair care company here in the DMV. And as I'm painting and creating on the side, I'm designing the product designs for these companies. Mm. I'm designing the logos. Um, We're having brand marketing strategy uh, meetings as to like, okay, how can we grow these companies? And I realized it's only till recently that I realized that you, if you're a creative person, there's so many other ways that you can you can fund your your passion, your lifestyle, whatever it is you want to do without just sticking to one form of art. Do mm-hmm. you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So to answer your question, um, it's my fine art. It's been through design, photography, and all of them coming together in my in my business. Uh, what college did you go to? I went to Frostburg State University. She was yes. so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Frostburg Yes, yes. Shout you got siblings? Frostburg. Yeah, I How do. I have two sisters. You married? No, I'm not married. I was thinking about putting this ring on this finger. Though, Why? But no. I'm just not married, to chase her. Yes. Don't talk all success. <laughs> he said the boys want you now. Ah, let me just slide. She's like, hey, kid. No, right. No. Four sisters. How, how, how was that growing up? Um, so it's three sisters. It's two sisters, actually. But so you, yeah. I'm, the, I'm the third. Mm-hmm. So I'm the first. You get it? Mm-hmm. So it's not four. It's three oh, yeah, of us. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, you okay. don't confuse me, finish. <laughs> How was it growing up, though? Um, it was awesome. Any pressure on you as the oldest? Mm, to be honest, maybe no, not necessarily. I don't think there was pressure from my parents. Your sister over there, like, yeah, I give her. <laughs> yeah, I think the pressure more comes in culturally. Like, you know how your parents will have a conversation. Like, you know the expectation that they have for you mm-hmm. without actually coming out to say it. So, I think being raised in an environment where it's like you're the oldest. You know, you get that look when you're five, like, look, get it together mm-hmm. because your sisters are, are watching you. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And it's like, all right, well, let me sit down. Y'all can go play and look <laughs> crazy. <laughs> so in that way, when you're when you're brought up in that type of space without even having a conversation, you just know, OK, I'm the oldest. Mm-hmm. So, OK, guys, let's you know, yeah. this is what they told us to do. Being and, that you were born here uh, to Nigerian <laughs> parents, so you're first generation. Yes. Would you say your work? um Everything that you do, I'm going to touch on cam life in a minute. Is it, would you say it's cross-cultural? Um, yeah, I would for sure. For sure. Everything, every aspect, everything that I'm creating, everything I do is cross-cultural. Um, and 
I definitely think from every aspect, from fine art, painting, photography, the blog, um, everything from the names like that I name my pieces to, um, you know, the themes behind my arts is very much so like um, it infuses like one of them was called uh, Relatively Distant. And the title of the piece ties in between uh, a play on words between cultures and being here in Nigeria. I mean, being here in America and feeling that that loss, like, wow, I didn't really grow up with my grandparents, you know, we have phone calls on the phone, but it's always this thing of like, okay, but yet I'm still American and there mm-hmm. are things about American culture that I love mm-hmm. and enjoy. Um, so I think in every aspect of my art and everything I'm creating, there is this like dual identity that even if you're not African, it's like, okay, I'm first generation Mexican, but I get it being, you know, raised here, but in my home, we're speaking Igbo, but you know, at school, mm-hmm. we're speaking English, you know? Um, so, I mean, at home we spoke English too, but you get what I'm saying? Like right. the culture is just completely different. Yeah. And we and one, on of, one, of, one of your series, um, I think it's called Sunflower Series. Yeah. You are, uh, you, you, you said it's expressed to reflect the, uh, the mood of a society right now. Right. What mood do you do you see our society in right now? If that's a fair um, question. <laughs> without getting into politics, because I feel like politics is a huge part, plays a huge role in our, in our society to date more than ever. Um, especially from a millennial perspective, I feel like we we I, from my personal experience, I feel like we didn't necessarily. It's like oh, politics. That's for our parents. We don't really need to. But it's like with all the changes that have happened, and I would even say that I've noticed in being inspired to create so much art. Um, I think part of that was like having a black president. You know, like there was something about the music. I felt a change in like marketing and commercials and other black artists. Mm. You know, between the span of uh, Barack being, you know, in his presidency, in his term, like I noticed how people were just like, yo, if, if, if we could have a black president, we're, we're all limitless mm-hmm. in whatever we can create and do. And so um, to have all of that just drastically change, I feel like the society we live in today is like forcing all of us to wake up, regardless of whatever your profession is, regardless of your beliefs, it's like, we need to be more proactive in whatever it is we're doing to bring about change. I think it was Nina Simone who said an artist has an obligation to reflect at times in their art or exactly. something like that. I butchered that. Exactly. <laughs> but I get so, it. What is your favorite color? <laughs> um, sunflower yellow. Like that. Mustard yellow. Yellow is one for me. I don't know which one sunflower is. <laughs> it's like, no, I'm it has like a hint of orange in it. Gotcha, gotcha. But it's, yeah. What's and your I favorite think that tool? color looks really great on black women. Huh? Your favorite tool? My favorite tool? Yeah, like in your painting bag, tool bag. Oh, okay, to use. Um, I don't know. I don't, no one's ever. Or the oil, the canvas, the brush. Oh, okay, okay, probably oil brush. Yeah, oil brush for sure. Talk to me about <laughs> talk to me about in Chem Life. What yes. is Chem Life blog? Okay, uh, so it's in Chem. Life. In Chem Life. Yes. Yeah. So in Chem means mine in Igbo language. Mm-hmm. Um, so again, that ties in what your other question about, um, two cultures. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's two sisters, two cultures, one, one bond is what in chem life encompasses. Um, and it ties into being Nigerian and American. So that's why we use like two words, like in chem life, like, and so we're, we're educating people on our culture as well with the name of our blog. Um, but the overall purpose and how our blog came about was me and my sister, um, would have two Kunonso, by the way. Shout okay. out. <laughs> Plantina um, Proverbs. You yes, just, please know go check names. it out on Amazon. Yes, sir. Um, but yeah, so we realized like as first gen women and who didn't, who don't necessarily want to follow the stereotypical path of like becoming a nurse you know, as soon as you graduate or without graduating, you're already married. You don't necessarily know yourself fully. You know Wonderful. what I mean? Things like that. Just, yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> so just like things that society suspect expects you to check off. Mm. You are realizing like, yo, I'm not ready. To, I'm not there. Like, and is that a problem? Like, you know, and then, so we would have these conversations or I don't want to be that. I don't want to be a nurse for the rest of my life. And so these us realizing like yo we should definitely document these conversations that we're having um and in the process we're like okay how can we document this and still speak to both cultures 
how can it not just be like, hey, shout out to all my African women out there. It's like, no, wherever, if you're Haitian, wherever you're from and you you can relate to the content, then please like connect with us because we're all, you know, one community. Um, and so we started the blog. And in the process of blogging, we'll talk about um, our hair texture. We'll talk about dating, fashion. Um, we'll talk about social media and how that can influence your um, your spaces, your friend circles. Um, and so we realized like a lot of women were connecting with the information we were sharing. Um, and then we traveled to Nigeria. Our grandmother had passed on my dad's side. And so we traveled to Nigeria, documented um, her funeral, came back and had an exhibition just solely based on the photographs we've taken um, and that was uh, sponsored through our blog so we realized like wow there are ways that we can actually monetize so it was just a passion project at mm -hmm. first just wanting to connect with other women and it just grew to you know the Washington Post reaching out to us and was like yo this how is how can really people uh, read you know like if they want to check out the blog right now um, in camlife.com or yeah in camlife.com or um our Instagram and Cam Life at Incam Life Blog. You also wear the head of a content curator. Yes. Um, in what capacity do you, do you flex that skill? So, Speaking of Cam Life. So I love that you asked that question. So a huge part of my marketing business is uh, social media content development. <laughs> And I never even realized till like years later that that is a huge way to monetize your business. There are a lot of companies out there who are looking for um, young people who have like just mastered social media, who have mastered Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all, all of them, including LinkedIn, if it's, if it's a professional business. Um, but yeah, being able to curate content for other companies is very important. Like it, that in itself is a talent. Um, and so I think that just to answer your question, that is one way for sure on a daily basis that through my business and yeah, is creating, developing content mm -hmm. where they may be through graphics, photography, um, understanding a brand, like understanding, okay, what is your overall vision and mission um so it's not just creating content posting it closing your eyes you know turning off your phone and praying that somebody <laughs> somebody likes it interacts with it the whole um psychological mm -hmm. you know breakdown is so okay what is what who are we trying to attract who's the target audience um what what time of day day are we sharing this information what is our overall purpose mm -hmm. um what is the vision is it to speak at you know a ted talk like what what are where are we trying to get to mm -hmm. um so those are the ways that i like curate and develop information and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I hope I answered the question. No, you answered more than that. You know, I see, a, I see a, a, a collaboration between. I just want to throw this out there. I know AK, you listening right now, <laughs> and Cam Life and Stunt Communal Podcast Couch Talk collaboration Ooh, coming. Yeah, we got some things to talk yes, about. Some conversations. We got some conversations <laughs> to have. But I was, I was just intrigued when you know, saying like the um content curator how many people miss that part of it you know mm. especially you know everybody right now is a social media driven business yes. business and it's just like and it's crazy yeah. and to be honest i feel like you know my advice sometimes when people you know say like 10 years ago they only envisioned themselves becoming a doctor and not necessarily like what why do i need to be on instagram why do i need to be on social media why do i need to it's like even doctors today are their own brands. Mm. Like, you know what I yeah. mean? The Dr. Miami, for example, like there are a lot of doctors where people even come to you based on the con the information that they've only seen online. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, so I think it can be a blessing, but it can also be a curse where like, I feel like there's a huge number of my generation who are lost to where it's like, they're not even proud of being a doctor anymore because it's like, Yo, they're seeing this their girl is media trained. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? They're seeing their friend who decided to, you know, do something creative with their lives and they're like so sad about it. It's mm -hmm. like, no, like, yo, look at what you accomplished. Like, yeah. no one, the, even the creative can do that, you know? And so it's like just, yeah, so I think it can be a curse where we're just not staying in our lane anymore. Everyone is like just, you know, we, we can't even just share anything anymore that's not perfect or curated or yeah yeah so i think in that sense it, it can be beautiful and bad at the same time when this mics go off you know what i'm saying i got i got some uh some we gonna we gonna chat you know what i'm saying <laughs> but as we close though um I'll
was curious to know what um, my guest, our guest, is um, most curious about right now. What are you most curious about right now? Most curious in what sense? Like culture? And the first thing that comes to your mind. Um... I'm curious no, I'm about curious who's gonna about win. A lot of I'm curious about who's gonna win in uh, the next election right now. That's the first thing that came to my mind. Right. What are you See, most curious about right now? That's politics right there. Um, I think I'm most curious to see where our generation ends up. Like, you know, I think that is something I think of. Like, what is the purpose of a majority of the things that we are interested in today? Like, where are we going with all of this? I think that's that's the most that's something that's been pressing in my heart like what why you know what i mean we're all moving right but what is the goal like what are you moving towards like what are we and i feel like that's something that our generation why there's so much talk about our generations because we're moving we're getting things done we're you know but there's still a lot of like things that are negative that are happening and and it's beautiful too at the same time but it's like what do we ever stop to really think okay i'm doing this i'm killing it here and there but where am i trying to go with this like what is am i actually influ am i making a difference in this world like what am i doing with it and where are we going to end up in the end so i think that's the fine. perfect place to <laughs> end maybe it's too deep like, but yeah like yeah that's i hope i didn't get too deep with it oh nah you yeah. uh, you just scratched the surface <laughs> believe that i'm trying to tell you but nah listen it has been a great pleasure having you back yeah on the podcast thank you so much shout out to your sister coming through you know what i'm saying and uh, kicking oh, it with you if you have not watched planting and Privates, go check it out yes well, on i have amazon. had the, on amazon prime i have had the pleasure and privilege of speaking with uh chi 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 didn't mind during care she yes. is the co-founder of Chem Life, yes. Chem Life blog, a graphic mm -hmm. designer, mm -hmm. web developer, photographer, content curator, and painter, artist. Yes, at chgdesigns.com. Yeah, I was just going to ask you, how can people yes. check you out? How can people get in contact? So, what that good stuff? Um, we have my first name and last name dot com, and then we have um, so it's different tiers. So I try to break down each business, um, <laughs> and then um, for like marketing, social me media marketing, design, web design, then it's chgdesigns.com. So. Get in what contact. Get yeah. in contact. Hey, I'm Flex. Uh, awesome. If you heard what you loved or not love, hit the subscribe <laughs> button. Um, if you're on YouTube, hit so you get updates and every time we drop new content, we are on uh, the web, sitmpodcast.com. If you add a backslash, you put store, you get some merch. If you add another backslash, you put blog, you read some dope stuff. We got an incredible array of writers. Shout out to Amane, um, aka is curating uh, blog post series right now um it's some great stuff go check it out again perfect office solutions sponsored this episode 10 percent off you use promo code SITM podcast uh shout out to you for coming through again shout out yes, to mine the building thank you so much for having me yes this yo awesome. this has been great really this great. has been great the conversation was the type of conversations i love to have hey Come back <laughs> on that couch, you know. It's going to be chauffeur. Yes. Hey, listen, I'm Flex. Uh, appreciate y'all checking this out, and we out. Thanks, guys.